film is a medium that transports. All I have to do is pop myself in front of the TV to watch a movie, and I can just enjoy it. Whatever place the film takes me to. Movies have always been an escape. It gives you a whole new world to be in. I have a rekindled love affair with movies. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Real to Real Talk. I am Sergio Barrera, and it's time once again to talk all things movies. And you guys know I love talking movies with only two people, Susan Chisholm and Paul Britton. Welcome to the other Real to Real Talkers. Oh, uh, boy, we, uh, what an exciting episode this is going to be. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> when is it not? When is it not? Especially when we do <coughs> Netflix, Netflix Roulette. roulette. <laughs> Our friends over at realgood.com uh, have a Netflix roulette app you can find online at realgood.com forward slash roulette. And, you know, I got to say, team, the journey continues to be a whole lot of fun when we have to do, uh, when we have to do roulette. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and we previewed this la last week and we let everybody know we're going to be doing adventure and, and Susan picked it. And action what, movies. What, action movies, not adventure action. And what we didn't realize is that we all got foreign films, which yes, is we did. completely random. I got a, a, a mega blockbuster. I'm not oh. going to spoil anything, but yeah, it was a mega <clears throat> blockbuster. And, but it was a, it was a, it was a, it was not a, a, a U.S. made film. So. I got a mega something. Um, okay. <laughs> Yep. There uh, were there were blocks in it, and people got posted. So. Sergio, I am I am going to say that if you've never watched <laughs> any of the movies I've done for Netflix Roulette, even if I've said, "Hey, you should watch it," <laughs> Um oh, I know that one. I saw it. Okay, this is one you will love it. You'll love oh. it. You'll love it. It's you're gonna you will absolutely love this movie. But just just think, Sergio, we'll it's not it. as bad as. What was it? Feo y sabroso, pero sabroso. This is true. This is true. You know what? I was already bracing myself for you to say 13th Warrior. That's how conditioned I am now. <laughs> that is literally where I thought you were going. And I was like, my hackles were up. And it's like, almost. Opportunity Next time. missed. Opportunity no, no, no. Not missed. Not a missed opportunity because if I do it on a regular okay. basis, it's going to continue to condition him. And I'm not going to ever get it. I'm never going to catch him by surprise That's if I do it on a regular basis. Yeah. So, wow. That's I was like, just it. because. It had a foreign accent that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it made me Dr. Pepper out my nose. Thank you for that. <clears throat> but yeah, the beauty of this whole roulette thing is that it really just it 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 puts us all three in a position where we we're watching something we've never seen, and so it's mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun. So yes. with action adventure in mind, because the actual the listing is action adventure on realgood.com. Uh, it opened a wide variety of, of options. In fact, I was surprised at uh, Jen. Actually, she she played the real good dot com roulette spin and was and literally had a couple of came up that where she was like, "How is that action adventure?" And I'm like, "Well, let me tell you about what I saw." And so, <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll get us started, and then uh, Paul, you'll follow, and Susan will round us out as we share. And and, and we got to make the point: we don't ever tell each other until the show, no. what we got. So if you'll <laughs> allow me to, I will start to talk about my entry in this week's uh, uh, Netflix roulette. And it's an, uh, it's an Indian film. It is the very first uh, Tamil, uh, which I, I believe is a, is a portion of India, uh, superhero film. Oh no! That is oh, that why? is what uh, that is what it uh, is claimed to fame is, and it is called Muga Moody. Uh, Muga Moody uh, in uh, in the language in the Tamil language means mask, and so I can tell you right from the start, and people can see from the image that's on the screen at this point that uh, <laughs> the superhero wore a mask. Yes. This movie, ladies and gentlemen, or lady and gentlemen, um, was over two hours long. Wow. 2.30. Because, Yikes. because, as is often the case in films from this region of the world, 
song and dance numbers just sort of begin out of nowhere. Yeah. And so I want you to imagine <laughs> a, a superhero movie that you have watched and are familiar with. And then just find the most awkward two or three spots to think this is where a good song and dance number would go. Because that's exactly what this movie did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to say that the, the song and dance numbers were relevant to the story, but they really weren't. Oh. No. Now, well, that's a bummer. I, well, <laughs> it, or is it? <laughs> I'll tell you what, <laughs> it made it awfully entertaining for me because, <laughs> uh, you know, well, no, no, actually emphasis on anything because when I sent you guys the clip uh, and I'll try to embed it into, into the show, it's like literally four or five seconds. That dance number occurred real early in the film. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, oh yeah, okay. One of the, one of the, ha the harm hallmarks of Bollywood and yeah. you know really filmmaking in this region of the world is that it will utilize song and dance mm -hmm. as part of the storytelling it was just such a it was at such random points that the overall story just sort of came to a screeching halt and then you had to sort of enjoy the you know the the song and dance number and then it was like okay back to the story we go and I'm like okay well did they translate the lyrics of the song yeah oh yes oh beautifully <laughs> oh. <laughs> So the very the first and and if, if it sounds like I'm focusing on the song and dance portions of this movie, it's because that was actually some of the best stuff. Um, <laughs> the, the the thing I've noticed about movies from from this region of the world, whether done or, you know, because this the gift of this show has been that I've been given movies of this type more than once. Um, whether it's actual releases from India or if it's something like. Um, uh, Slumdog Millionaire, which does the song and dance number at the end of the movie. Right. Uh, if there's one thing that's consistent about these films is that not only are they telling a story, in this case, a superhero story, but they're also using the film to talk about the social state of things mm -hmm. in their part of the world. And so they don't shy away from showing poverty. They don't shy away from showing corruption, from showing the things that happen within the portion of the world that this story takes place in. And so the movie itself takes on the typical superhero action tropes that any standard superhero movie would have. There's a guy who, you know, is in this case, he's very skilled at martial arts. He idolizes Bruce Lee. And so he's training in Kung Fu and karate and so forth. And this is what leads him to have this skill set that is, in the course of this film, superhuman, right? Mm. Um, there's a girl, and the oh. best, absolute best part of this film, and, and I'm gonna have to share with you guys the clip at some point, um, and if I can find a way to do it without a copyright hit on YouTube, I will even try to embed it into this, this episode. Um, he, when he first encounters the girl, he's, it, he's about to have a fight, with some local gang members that she happens to be close to or family with. And she comes up and he, you know, he, he's really angry at her for some reason. I forget what the case was. She got him in trouble. Uh, oh, that's right. There was an earlier scene where he was in some trouble and she stopped him from escaping by blocking him with her moped. So he got arrested, he got in trouble. And so now he's coming back to give her what for. And the moment he sees her as he's grappling with these gang guys that are trying to keep her from, keep him from her, uh, he just freezes because he's instantly in love. And it's so overplayed. Uh, and all of a sudden, she's hitting him with bricks. She's hitting him with sticks. And then she maces him in the face. And the whole time he has this blissful look of just love in his eyes. I mean, he's just so in love. And that's how they portray this, this sort of love at first sight moment. It was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And so total, total um, uh, overplaying um, uh, of moments in the film. The, the action sequences are quite fun because they're martial arts. Um, the, you know, you go into how he uh, first takes on the Booga Moody 
character as his as his uh, superhero <laughs> persona. Um, and uh, from there it progresses and it, it, it ends up being a pretty complex story. Okay. But <laughs> the, the point is, as Paul is rushing me on my own show, yeah. it, <laughs> the, the point is that this movie was far more entertaining than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Which teaches me, like, don't judge again ahead of time. But, but there were some absolutely ridiculous moments. So um, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I probably won't revisit it. But I'm always <laughs> curious to know, is there going to be a sequel? So, <laughs> so yeah it was a lot of fun it, it, it really was two and a half hours that if you took the music and the song and dance out you probably would get to about an hour 50 so oh wow you know yeah it That's still had quite it still had a lot of depth it, it had a lot of story to it so but, there, there uh, actually there is a sequel to that one and it's called the the 14th Mugamuri. <laughs> wow <laughs> You had to find a way. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I need my, I need my stickers. Hang on. Oh, my. <laughs> can't find it now. <clears throat> yeah. you, you could have used the... The, the sunglasses. <laughs> 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 okay, sorry. I'm done. I'm done. That's all right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that was my entry. And I was... Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say I wasn't glad when it was over. So... <laughs> <laughs> But what yeah. rating? What are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm going to give it, I would say yeah, I, it was good enough for the three tacos. It was okay. entertaining. Cool. Was entertaining. Cool. And uh, yeah, so uh, that is my entry into Netflix Roulette this time around. <laughs> Paul, I'm curious to know, uh, what did the wheel give you? In 2019, the 13th Where? movie <laughs> on the international box office uh, grossing list was a movie out of China called The Wandering Earth made uh, globally um, so just under 700 million dollars 699 million 800 blah blah blah, blah. Wow. <laughs> The Wandering Earth is the movie that I got and I'm just going to tell you the conceit of the movie and Sergio I'm telling you you'll enjoy this so uh, it, it's it's a disaster flick. It's the world is going to be ending soon flick. And uh, what's happening in this one is is that the sun is is growing and it, it's entering its decay stage where you know like stars grow, get bigger as they start before they decay and then then just collapse. And so right. it's starting to enter that phase and and it's and it's pretty soon going to swallow up the earth. Um, and so the earth needs to figure out, you know, something to do. And so, you know, most of the movies like this, what you expect is they, they <laughs> find a plucky team of, uh, of, of, uh, you know, um, explorers or something to find a new planet or something like that. Ah, uh -uh. nope. The whole world's coming together for this motherfucker and we're putting engines on the earth, bitches. What? That's right. We're putting engines on the Earth. We're turning the whole fucking Earth into a spaceship. Peace out, bitches. We're gone. I am in. The whole Earth. <laughs> engines everywhere. Wow. Is this live action? Yes. Engines everywhere. Yeah. Effects that make tournament that makes the Transformer movies feel bad for themselves. Um, wow. <clears throat> just engines everywhere the whole earth just yeah. decides we're going to put engine we're going to embed engines into the planet and we're we're off going goodbye we're we're leaving we're our moving. orbit <laughs> and we're, we have found a we have found another star that uh that doesn't have any planets that we can rotate around and it's a young star and we'll be good wow and out how could you not be in i'm it? i'm looking this up I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely. I'm telling you, this is this is what you want from a movie. Now, great title. I will. I will warn. Yes, fantastic <laughs> title. The premise is just absolutely ridiculous. Like I'm in no matter Walkers. what happens on watching sure. this movie. Like if you had just told me, "Hey, Paul, we're gonna watch Wandering Earth about putting engines into the planet and just flying the fuck away from our solar system," I'm in right now. <laughs> Put that on immediately. I, I, I do have to warn you. The conceit of the movie, the 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 not the conceit, the the conceit is amazing. The the uh, the story points, the 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 drama 
part parts of the movie don't live up to the conceit, unfortunately. So um, what ends up happening is, is that as they get into, uh, get close to Jupiter, where they're going to be using Jupiter to slingshot themselves out of the, uh, out of the, the uh, solar system, uh, things go awry. And honestly, like, I don't know, it just, it, that, that segment of it is like, I loved the first like half hour to 45 minutes of the movie because of like the whole conceit. And then like when they're doing the whole Jupiter thing, it's like, meh. And yes, there are way more questions that go completely unanswered than you could ever come up with in a million years. Like, well, doesn't that completely fry the atmosphere? Well, yes, it probably <laughs> will. Say, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's why they build under underground. Every everybody uh, they they built a whole bunch of underground layers, and there was a lottery. And if you won the lottery, you got to be underground. Wow! Obvi obviously, yeah, <laughs> you know, and yeah, it's 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 problematic. I'm not going to lie. And so, like, the, all of the cities are like the underground cities are located where the engines are, and so like you know, there's thousands of engines so there are thousands of underground cities but like the right. whole purpose of the underground cities is you know a to keep the population going because you can't live up ground, above ground anymore and b right. um you know to 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 uh to actually manage the engines themselves um you know thing, things things happen and they have to solve problems and they go to the surface of the earth where the temperature was like at one point they're like oh it's minus 200 and it's like sun it would not be minus 200 it would be like <laughs> significantly colder than that like no stop right and, right you know and, and like at one point they're like well we can't do that with the engines that will destroy the atmosphere and it's like come on just stop like mm -mm. There's no atmosphere after this. Just that's wow. silly. Like you're, we're never living above ground again. Like you understand that. Like we're getting rid of all the air. The water is going to then go. Like just stop. But you know, whatever. I loved the conceit. So yeah, uh, I I'm giving the movie, uh, I'm giving give the movie the 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 three tacos, and I am I'm throwing on the guac just because of the the idea. The premise of the movie gets guacamole. The like movie it. itself gets the three tacos. I, the effects are like insane. Um, you know, like just so over the top. Everything, everything about this movie is just as over the top as you could possibly imagine. So, so I think you'll really like it, Sergio. And that's not it, a criticism. No, no, it it sound, it definitely sounds like something that yeah. uh, that I'd want to see uh, yeah. for sure. Um, easy. Was there any sort of like? Uh, I'm just curious. Was there any sort of like? class struggle about like who gets to be underground and anything like that well it's you know it's a chinese movie so no there wasn't it, it was just perfectly like they had a, a lottery and people understood if they won the lottery they got to go underground now there was a bit of a black market situation going on in the underground city later in the movie and that needed to be dealt with but gotcha but no i mean it, it seemed like it was an orderly thing Got it. Yeah. Interesting. The Wandering <laughs> Earth. I yes. am definitely looking it up. Uh, yeah. I know I say that Netflix. often, Paul, but this one really. This, yeah. I, I, and it's just a shade over two hours. So it's not, and there are no dance scenes. There's a couple of songs that they sing and they do add to translations, which are like a little bonkers, but that's okay. That's right. Okay. They have like these giant rovers that they, they take from Shanghai to Beijing and, and it's like, Sure, why not? You know. You know. I, I, I... <laughs> you you get to see uh, Beijing. Uh, what happens when it becomes completely iced over and like you're? It's yeah. I feel like it has elements of so many different action movies I've seen. So many. Yeah. Like uh, name it. Yes. Right. I mean, twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. After tomorrow. One hundred percent. Day after tomorrow. One hundred percent. Armageddon, absolutely, one hundred percent. Towering Inferno, yes. Oh, well, there you go. Yes, Towering Inferno. Uh, like, uh, yes. I mean, it's all there. It, Got uh, it. Terminator, a little bit, yes. A wow. little bit of Terminator, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 
can people not watch this movie? It's, I'm telling you. I, I, I've not even given away like half of the bonkers shit that goes on in this movie. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, it sounds like two of us are happy that Susan shows action and adventure because. Big time. Big time. Yeah. This, this one, I. Got you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't. It's, it was so good. Love it. All right. Well, Paul, thank you for that. Susan, Absolutely. close it out for us. What did the wheel give you? Hopefully it can live up to Paul's. Well, Bring it. it is it was my my film was also a film um it's not so the movie the movie that i had um was muppets take manhattan from I, from hong kong <laughs> i think okay. is what it says um and it was also it was it was also kind of martial artsy um to begin um so so the the movie it's actually a story we've heard s- something similar before um Beauty and the Beast there is no tale as old as time there are there are two brothers separated at birth um and <laughs> oh, they go no. on to become martial arts masters in and of their own selves and they don't know <laughs> They don't know that each other exists. They, they know that each other exists and they, they, they're, before their mother dies, uh, she gives them each half of a jade pendant. And so that's how, you know, she's like, look for your, look for your brother. He's got the, you know, the jade pendant or whatever. And of course, you know, when she, when she's, when she's passed, like the, the, the brothers are separated into um, warring factions, if you will, uh, like warring gangs. And so like, one of them. So, so the sorry. The day the title of the, the film is called Dragon Tiger Gate. Dragon Tiger um, Gate. Dragon. Not Tiger. Freaky Friday. No. Okay. No Lindsay Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, <clears throat> you know, they they're they're in these these warring warring gangs, um, and you know, one of the brothers really wants to become a martial. Or, you know, he wants to study under this like highly renowned martial artist and. Um, you know he's like well you're not humble enough and all this other stuff and so he's like well i'll just sit here until you until you let me be a, a student in your school and and mind you this is all in in um i believe mandarin chinese and so mm. i was like reading as fast as i could um you know and and so throughout the the movie you know he he's he's learning from this master and they they he ends up confronting his brother because they their gang stole something from the original gang. Sure. It's really hard to explain with that, but it makes sense to me. <laughs> so the first gang, the first gang has this like super awesome award that's like um it's meant to meant to show like high ranking. And so they the 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 other gang stole it from them. And so when they go back to to take it back, they start fighting and then that's when they realize, oh gosh, you've got the Jade pendant and we're brothers. And so then you know after back and forth a little bit and then a huge huge fighting happens and do they sing they kill they don't sing they Sorry. kill the they kill the 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 super master guy and um they insert engines in the earth they do not <laughs> i would have i would have made it that would pick 13 warriors by the way it's cantonese not mandarin Cantonese. Sorry. okay thank you okay. sorry it, you it, it, okay. i knew it was it was it was in chinese language um so so then after, after the, you know, the master is killed and the one brother is going to go back to his gang, but he changes his mind. So he joins forces with the brother to become the masters of the, of the, the dojo. Anyway, it's, there are, uh, it goes around in a lot of circles and uh, there's a lot of kicking and punching. And martial artsiness. You buried the lead. Donnie Yen's in it. I'm in. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> Hitman. Wow. Yes. Uh, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you. Yeah, that 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 guy is totally there. And <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, he was yeah. in. Did you see uh, Rogue One? Star Wars. Yes, a long time ago. It he was the the blind that long ago. Like Rogue One's only like five six years old. That's a long time. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> he anyway, was the blind monk. 
Yes, he's the blind okay. monk. Okay. Yeah, I don't really remember that, honestly. Okay. It was it it's... Did did so you anywho, enjoy it? It yeah. uh which one? This your, movie? Your movie. <laughs> your movie. Okay. Yeah. Cuz we started talking about another one in the middle there. Right, right. Full moon. Um no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was very flashy, very yeah. flashy martial arts, kung fu, etc. Like, if you're looking for that, you're gonna find it here. <laughs> um, but the story was very kind of like hmm. obvious and how it was gonna play out, in my opinion. Like the just the 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 way that things were going, it was like, yeah, this is. You know, I already know. Yeah, it it. It, uh, it it definitely. Yeah. It told you what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I'm going to have to. I mean, it was it was very um, actiony. So, and the so um, we got that. I, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with. I'm going to probably going to go with two tacos on this one okay. um, because it was it was flashy, and that's about it. <laughs> um, I, not, I mean, half, and, not not any guacamole for Donnie mm, yet. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar enough with him okay. to say that he deserves that, but um, <laughs> he, did a, he did an all right job, I suppose. <laughs> gotcha. And I, I need to apologize. I said Freaky Friday earlier. I meant Parent Trap. So this was not a retelling oh. of the Parent Trap because Freaky it Friday was, is the one where he you switch and, with the mom and kid. I was going for the Parent Trap where it separated twins switch places. But they weren't know. twins. They weren't. They were just brothers. They were just brothers. Okay. Well, close enough. Like you if they, still, if, yeah, you can still do a parent trap with just brothers. I think it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was unique. Sounds like it. So <laughs> the wheel has gifted us once again, yes, with action adventure of all kinds, I three four films. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fascinating. Well, Want to say just, like <laughs> a big thank you to our friends at RealGood.com for having them for thriller to begin with. Uh, and uh, we encourage you to go to realgood.com, check out the app for Netflix roulette and everything else that comes with what Real Good is out there for. If you love movies, you'll love their site. All right. Well, we also want to remind you that uh, we are on YouTube, as you can tell from being here with us. Don't forget, click subscribe if you haven't already. Also, click that notification bell so you know when our episodes land and like the episode and then go back, watch others and like those. <laughs> Uh, you can also catch us on Podbean and Spotify for our audio, audio versions of the show. And also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Let us know what you're thinking. What are you watching? Tell us. Encourage us to see things. And then take on the advice that we give and watch some of these fantastic films that we get to talk about week to week. Which brings us to this week's segments. What the hell did I just watch is where we always begin. Paul, I'll turn it over to you. Wow us. Okay, well. Uh, you're going to do it after the wandering her. So. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that could have qualified here. But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, this, I, I pulled another one out of my uh, list that has been on for a long time. And I figured, all right, time to get this one off. Um, and also, I just was in the mood for a Bill Murray movie. So oh. I, I watched uh, The Dead Don't Die. Oh. Have you seen that one? Sergio? I have not, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's a zombie flick starring, uh, listen to this cast. It's fantastic. So Bill Murray, Adam Driver, uh, Chloe Sevgeny, uh, Steve Buscemi, yeah. Danny Glover. Um, I think that's the, uh, oh, uh, no, yeah, that's kind of the, well, and if you know Tom Waits, Tom Waits. Oh, yeah. It, although, but, you know, he doesn't actually do any music or anything. Um, <laughs> he plays a, a, a hermit and it's, he, he's probably the that's funniest a perfect Tom Waits role. Yeah, like he's probably the funniest character in the movie. So, this this is a uh, no. This is it's a it's a funny movie. Like I, I'm not like this is a super super dark, super 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 dry movie. Like this movie is you know was a Thanksgiving turkey that got left in the oven like three <laughs> hours too long. It's so dry. It is so dry and then the electricity goes out and it is so dark. But, um, oh, sorry guys, too soon. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. so Ouch. 
but it, it's a lot of fun. Like it's it's a zombie. So what what happens is is that um, fracking uh, in the polar ice regions ends up t- twisting the uh, the Earth off its axis, and that causes the dead to rise from the grave. I guess. I mean, like they don't really. <laughs> the, 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 you know, that's kind of the reason that they give for this happening. And that, I, I guess you're just supposed to be like, okay, I'm being entertained by Bill Murray. That's enough for me. Um, <laughs> and Bill Murray and Adam Driver uh, are the two main characters in this movie. They play, uh, uh, you know, in a small town, they play uh, uh, the sheriff and, and his number one deputy. And, and they're just like, uh, very much uh, like, you know, Andy Griffith and Don Knotts uh, from the Andy Griffith show, you know, just like that kind of like chummy pair that have, you know, have been together for a while and, you know, just have this relationship where, you know, they say very little to each other, but they don't have to say a lot to each other because they yeah. know what's going on. It's really, I, I this movie, it, it's really fucking weird. I mean, because it is just, it, at no point is it, le- is it like r- aggressively openly funny, but it is unrelentingly funny. Got it. Like just, uh, oh, Tilda Swindon. Actually, that wasn't even on the top. Tilda Swindon's in this movie. And she plays this Scottish, um, I don't want to ruin the big reveal later in the movie. But yeah, don't. Uh, oh, Rosie Perez is briefly in this movie. I forgot about that. Carol Kane is in this movie. Carol friggin' Kane. Um, but Tilda Swinton's character is fantastic. I'm just thinking of all the like, it's just, it, there's just this constant, never ending level of low grade humor that simmers throughout the movie and never actually boils over at any uh, time even at the very end it's just it's just constantly like you're, you're just constantly like it it's so dumb funny that it almost makes you uncomfortable that like it shouldn't be this dumb funny like it's just it's i it <laughs> i don't know i you know it's the interesting thing is so like thinking back to other zombie funny movies um like the uh Oh my god. Zombieland? Not, what's that? Zombieland? No, I haven't seen that one. Um the oh, I've seen you, that one. Oh, excellent. Mark it on the mark it eight, dude. Um I'm so, right no, the, the, the <laughs> one uh, the British one. The British one. The oh, British one. uh Shaun of the Dead? Shaun of the Dead, thank you. Um, you know, so thinking of Shaun of the Dead, it's like Shaun of the Dead is like openly funny and like you know cost is going for gags and is over the top with the action and stuff like that this is not that so please don't think that like this saw watch who uh jim jermash who made this movie saw shawn of the dead and was like i can out british these people (laughs) and did it i mean (laughs) it's so Frigging dry. Uh, I'm the, looking forward to it. There are recurring gags in this movie that the more they happen, it's just like, oh my, you all, you, you, you just know it's coming. Like, you know, the gag is coming and it's, and it, it, it hits and it's completely 100% satisfying. Um, nice. This is not for everybody. Like, if, you know, it's so it, you have to like dark comedy and you have to just be like all right dry humor i'm in yeah it's th- this is the driest of humor movies i've ever seen in my entire life and it's just like i have seen so much british stuff that it this is like whew, i it's yeah it, I, i'm literally seeing it it's it's on my list so yeah, yeah I, it sounds like something i'd love yeah it's it actually is it's 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 a it's a good trip it's a good trip i recommend it right yeah well i don't know if that's the most recent of the entries that you've done in terms of like proximity to now mm. um but that certainly is an intriguing one so no i uh, early on i did the lighthouse oh that's, that's right def- that's yeah, right that's definitely the most that recent. is the one Indeed. Well, whenever they're the movies that Paul brings us land, they're always good selections. So make sure yeah. you check in with us week to week to find out what Paul has been watching. And uh, Paul, this is a labor of love, man. I got to yeah. give it to you. Yeah. 
I actually had my first ever what the hell did I just watch dream last night. Wow. Oh wow. That's like I, I literally like today I like when I woke up, like I didn't even realize it was a dream. <laughs> like oh it was it was like did I, what, what was that movie that I watched? And then I was, I was like, oh my God, no, that was a fucking dream. And, and it's like, cause I oh. couldn't remember the title of it. I was like, what was that movie I watched where that was happening? <laughs> there, like, I'll just tell you, there was a yeah, lot of I... bleeding out of penises. I, it, yeah, I don't. <laughs> well, now you have to find it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> um, if it doesn't That's... exist, you have to make it now. Right. right. That's the first exactly. time that phrase has been used on this show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if you want to get all kinds of stuff uh, into your eyeballs, uh, make sure you watch what Paul's watching. So week to week, here on What the Hell Did I Just Watch, you can find out what kind of weirdness Paul is up to that's now giving him dreams. So. <laughs> dreams. <laughs> yeah. It is time now for Susan Finally Saw. Yay. And I'm willing to bet, Susan, that nothing of what he just talked about is going to be involved in your movie, whatever it might be. Actually, you'd be really surprised. It's almost like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even really know how I can follow up with that. Um, I, so I, 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 I was going to continue on my trend of watching action and adventure movies. But after I watched uh, Dragon Tiger Gate, I needed... Damn it. A break. Again. a break this me i don't know what that is okay so i i ended up watching um uh i was kind of zoning into something that was um mind numbingly dumb and funny okay i watched super bad oh yes great it movie. was it was uh like mind numbingly dumb and funny yeah absolutely i mean what, what really can you say to that i mean it's it's McLovin. Everything that happens in, in like all the little gags that keep happening, like <laughs> uh, like okay, what was it that that, that, that they're freaking out because he, he's getting arrested because he's using the fake ID and then he gets hit by a car. What? <laughs> okay, so it's just I mean like the little things that happen like that that are over and over again, these little little repeated gags and 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 like over the topness of it. Like I I I it was good, it was funny. I actually found myself laughing and it's not usually, that's not my typical type of humor. Yeah. And I mean, because, because as evidenced by like the other movies that are similar to this that I've watched and I've been like, yeah. And, um, I actually did. I really, really enjoyed it. So Great. yeah, take Ed, take, take a page out of my book and finally see that if you haven't. Mm, agreed. Good. That is good Co-sign. advice. <laughs> good advice. Uh, had Paul commented on the super bad? Because I'm um, really curious to know what he wrote. It was probably yes with a bunch of S's. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me find it. I gotta while, find it. while you do that, it took me so long to finally see that movie in its entirety. I just had watched segments of it. Okay. And then one day I finally sat down and I was like, this is hilarious. Yeah, it's so, so good. The cast is bonkers. Bonkers. Oh, and and to, to see where they've gone now. Yeah. And, or, or at least what they've done since. Yeah, yeah. So, so Paul's comment, Paul's comment on my, on my, in case you, in case you're watching or listening for the first time, I have a list of just a ridiculous amount of movies, 160 (laughs) movies now. And Paul took it, was, was gracious enough to take it upon himself to, to help me categorize things and also like, let me know kind of a little tidbit of thought of what was, what was going on. (laughs) And, um, you know, those, those things range from what? really to yes in all caps and like 16 exclamation points this one has yep <laughs> <laughs> that's three, it three letters wow. yep, y-u-p yep. so yep. i mean anything that gets a paul seal of approval is going to get one from me too so uh um, <laughs> so i was like okay okay this is a safe bet i'll, I'll go ahead and check this out <laughs> i'm gonna go it man- wasn't- it's fine. i'm gonna go yeah. manipulate the excel sheet and make him have said yes with a bunch of Exclamation points to 13 so. <laughs> No, no, no. The, no. The, the Excel spreadsheet would automatically change it because it knows better. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, I think, you know, in, in case, guys, 13th Warrior had really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It happened. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed Super Bad. It really is a fun film. And it's now so, you can yeah. check mark that one off of your list. 
And I we'll probably indeed. add five more before the week is out. So probably. <laughs> It hasn't been uh, growing exponentially recently. This is true. No, no, but it is still still steadily growing. I do I do find myself adding uh, throughout the you know throughout. I think, I think um, this week I didn't add any, but last week I did. So yeah. you should see my uh, what the hell that I just watch movie list. It's I'm scared of that. So what's not? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. It is, well, it is now a multimedia list. There are some things written. There are some things on my phone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Excellent. I got to do what I did, which was a Google Drive document because it's on my phone and my computer and everywhere I need it. Yeah. Week to week, you can find out what Susan finally saw and uh, watch it yourself if you have it, or maybe even suggest something for her. So Ooh, that'd be good. Yes, please. All right. At this time, we're going to talk about real time rewind. And since we're in a new month, I'm going to pick up a new topic. And I oh. thought, you know what? After all this action-y stuff with people all over the place, this month I'm going to feature movies that have, for the most part, solo characters, where the movie is just one person for the majority of the film. Ooh. And so this week on Real Time Rewind, I want to remind you about a movie called Gravity. Uh, Gravity is a fantastic film uh, that uh, stars Sandra Bullock. And uh, I just can't recommend it enough. I enjoyed it tremendously. I saw it in the theater when it was first released. It is uh, literally a out in space adventure. And uh, when I say solo, oh boy, does she end up solo. And uh, it's, it's one of those kind of movies that when the, when the story of the movie starts to play out at the beginning of the film, it is every fear I've ever had about things in space. And I love anything related to space, except for the notion of just floating out on your own. And so, uh, yeah, the, the basic premise, and I'll, I'll just simply say this, is she's working on a space station and then she's careening out of control into the void of space. And she needs to figure out how to get home. So uh, that is the, uh, the basic setup of the movie. And it, uh, it also stars George Clooney, but I won't say how or why. But it is a wonderfully done film, and it is truly uh, the kind of movie that will get you feeling all kinds of things. So Gravity, uh, find it if you haven't watched it. If you have watched it, watch it again, because it's always worth a rewatch. So that is this week's Real Time Rewind. Super short, so it's not like you're doing right. like a major investment of time here, people. Yeah, yeah. It gets going and it keeps going and then it's done and you're like, I need to go outside. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is true. It, okay. it, it causes stress. All right. Well, thank you once again for joining us here on YouTube. Don't forget, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, click that notification bell. You want to know when our episodes land because it's never the same day. Uh, also, you can make sure and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to let us know what uh, what you've been watching to know what we've been watching to check out past episode posters, which means you can go back in our YouTube and Spotify mm -hmm. and Podbean and listen to past episodes. You, you're going to find things you love. I promise. Uh, more so though, we thank you so much for supporting us and always coming back to check out more of what we're doing here. We have, we've got some recent subscriptions and so I'm appreciative of that. And I've gotten comments here and there from folks about how they enjoy the show. So thank you guys very much. Okay, it is time for this week's real quick reviews. We've got a couple on tap, Paul, and um, I'm I've been curious to talk about both of these. So, Paul, yeah. I'll throw it to you. Where do you want to start? Now we're gonna, we're going to start with I care a lot. That that's the obvious starting point. Sounds good to me. I care a lot. Starring Rosamund Pike, who just picked up a Golden Globe for her work in this film. Yeah, and I want to talk about that for a second. Let's do that. So this movie was categorized as a, in the musical slash comedy uh, uh, categories of, um, of the Golden Globes. Yeah. Did you find, like, and I just reviewed uh, The Dead Don't Die, super dark comedy. I love dark right. comedies. Did you find anything about this movie, like, amusing on a comedic level? No. Anything? Not like, at all. One second of it, were you like, oh, that's really dark funny? No. No, in fact, um, yeah. I, I, I was, I was, I was offended by this film, to be honest. Yeah, uh, it's, on many oh, it's levels. Horribly offensive. It's yeah. horribly offensive. Um, which, if that's supposed to be funny, okay, but fuck you. 
Right. Like, seriously, like, fuck you if you find this movie funny, and I'm not going to shy away from that. Because right. there's nothing funny about anything that anybody in this movie does at all. Yeah. Like, if you want to say that there's something mildly amusing about Peter Dinklage's character, who, by the way, he's phenomenal in this movie. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and actually, all the acting is great. Like, I, you know, no, uh, you know, so, uh, but it, it, if you want to say kind of like, what Peter Dinklage is doing in the movie with his character is kind of funny. Uh, I guess like Peter Dinklage's minions are kind of like just the, the stereotypical dumb thugs. So right. I, I guess that's a little funny. Yeah. Like that, that part of it is a little funny, but like to call this a comedy because there are dumb thugs in the movie just doesn't, I don't get it. Like, well, the the thing for me with this film is, and and again, I noticed that too in terms of where it landed in the nomination for the right. Golden Globes. It listen, we we can for me, we could talk about how the topic itself wasn't funny. The main topic of this whole thing, yeah. uh, and what happened. What I what was offensive to me, in addition to that, was yes. that you you. You, they're trying to sell me a bill of goods about who I'm supposed to admire when this thing is over. And I'm like, no. Are they? No. They're, Are I, they? I, 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 that's, how, that's how I felt throughout a majority of the movie. I, I kept thinking yeah. to myself, no, you, you can't try and, and, yeah. and redeem someone, anyone yeah. in this movie. And Who's, it was just... Do you feel like they tried to redeem someone? I think that they did. Or at least that's how they were trying to make you feel, and to, so that the reveal would be, oh my god! I felt no sympathy for anyone in this film. No, I felt, no I one. felt like, I, I felt like absolutely nobody got exactly what they deserved. I they were all like, atrocious. Yeah, and like, Diane Weiss was wasted, no, wasted not, yeah. with, because her moments, which were short, were, were so good. good. I so wanted good. to see more yeah. of her character. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, and and I did like Peter Dinklage's character too. Um, yeah. I, I thought it, it was he was well well cast, well done. Um, I'm offended that this is categorized as a comedy. Um, there's a lot of discussion online about this movie. About are you supposed to like Ro uh, Rosalind Pike's character or not? Like, yeah. is she the is she like an anti-hero hero? Are you supposed to feel bad for? Her? Are you supposed to, and like. If the people who made the movie wanted you to, ha sh to have an ounce of sympathy for her at any time during the movie, they failed terribly and uh, that's horrible that they would do that. I, I don't think that they, I don't think that was the intent. I, I, I just can't believe that, that they did that. And, and I believe the ending is not at all cathartic. And I, I no. feel like, this the audience deserved a cathartic ending and uh and while what happens is completely uh, appropriate um it's also not remotely enough it's like, an easy just, it, it's such an easy it is yes yeah. it is such a cop-out yeah. it is such a cop-out and, and it's so frustrating and and i have to say this i i would never be one to defend the russian mafia but yeah. The Russian Mafia, if this is who you're supposed to be, I'd be afraid the Russian Mafia would watch this movie and be like, uh, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> so, right. yeah. Um, as far as ratings uh, on our five taco scale, block if you want to add some more, mm -hmm. this one comes in for me at no more than two. There's no block yeah. for this one. Um, I'm, I'm giving it two as well. I'm giving yeah. it two tacos. Uh, the performances are fantastic. Um, if I'm supposed to hate everybody in the movie, job well done. <laughs> they got it. Well done because I hate everybody in the movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, agreed. And I, but I loathed the last ten minutes of this movie. I, I just Me absolutely too. despised it. I uh, more than I should have a um, reason to despise anything. I, I just didn't buy the decision Dinklage made. I just didn't no, buy it. No, at all. Didn't buy it. It's just, no, no, nothing. Nothing about what happens in the last 15, 10, 15 minutes yeah. makes any sense whatsoever. And it is completely demoralizing. Right, yeah. yeah. 
But hey, make sure you watch it. We're never going to say don't watch yeah. it. We're going to yeah. say make your own decision. So check, yeah, check out what's yeah. ro- what's getting our uh, undies in a knot. Find out. <laughs> Find out. Absolutely. And then Find come out. back and tell us. <laughs> yes. Come back and tell us. I, I, and, I and, really encourage you, Susan, to check this out. And now, love to hear your opinion. but the good thing I is, is we out. get to go to the exact absolutely. antithesis of this movie. Yes, absolutely. Now, I want to say one quick thing before we get to Nomadland uh, in relation to Rosamund Pike. When, when I saw that she won the Golden Globe in that category, I was ashamed that I haven't done a better job this year, like I normally do, of uh, watching across all the categories, sure. all of the nominations. And so sure. I need to catch up on that before March 15th when the Oscar nominations uh, are announced. So, mm-hmm. uh, But yeah, that was the only thing that Rosamund Pike winning the Golden Globe did for me, uh, and especially because of how this movie went. We move now to a movie called Nomadland, uh, yes. starring Francis McDormand. And I have been, I, I, I tried to sneak this one into last week's uh, real quick reviews because of what it did to me. Uh, and so, Paul, I, I'm very curious. Uh, there's a lot of Oscar buzz, especially since it just picked up the Golden Globe uh, for Best Picture. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts? Get us started. So, this movie, it, It's, this movie is, this is what happens if you don't want to make a straight documentary, but instead want to take (laughs) like one or two actors Mm -hmm. and then put them in what seems, seems to be very real, 100% genuine situations and say, just see what develops. Just see what happens. Be here, see what happens, latch onto something. Have, you know, have some experiences with these people, uh, see what happens. And, and that's what this movie feels like. I mean, obviously that's not what happened in, in, in actuality and, and right. mega kudos to Clo Zhao for creating a film and, and, and a, a story that just feels so genuine. It, it like this movie is literally, it's, it's completely 100% unplanned and ironic that we did uh, I Care A Lot and this movie at the same time because <laughs> this movie is literally the antithesis. Of, Absolutely. Like, everybody in this movie is genuine, is real, uh, is sympathetic. You know, people that you meet for literally like two minutes, the people that are on screen for two minutes, 100% sympathetic. Like, you don't have to tell me anything about their story. I am on board for whatever they're going through. Because it's it, it's they're just that real and uh, Francis McDormand is amazing. I don't know uh, uh, how uh, what's Dan. Uh, what, oh boy, I should have this movie queued up, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> Are you talking about David Strathairn? David, David. Yeah, I said Dan. I meant David. David Strathairn. Yeah, I, I, he's phenomenal in this. Um, amazingly, like, phenomenal. Like, like just, you know, and he's a guy that's in stuff, like so many stuff, uh, so many movies, you know, uh, you know, uh, Born Ultimatum is, is one that pops into mm-hmm. my mind and immediately. And he's always good. And, yeah. but, sneakers. you know, he, sneakers, great, right, great. And like, this is so different. I mean, like th- this movie is not that different. Like I've seen Frances McNorman do this kind of thing where she's understated kind of, uh, regular human being you know yeah. like she's really good at being a human being this is david Strathairn. i i don't remember seeing this exact side of him before like he is just like straight up like fantastic in this movie it was an effortless effort, let me try that again effortless <laughs> performance yeah by everyone yeah. uh just real briefly for those who may not have seen it yet please do um yeah. it Free is the, the basic yes the basic premise of the film is that Frances McDormand, and I'm just going to quickly use her line in the movie to make the point. She is not homeless. She's houseless. Uh, she, it is a story of her journey as a nomad living out of her van and the community of people that do this uh, and, and that this is their lifestyle. And there's, of course, story elements and so forth. I don't know that I've invented this word, but for me, I kept thinking this is a dramumentary. Yes. It's a drama slash documentary because it literally exists within the community of people that do this and many of the people who do this and help other people become part of this type of lifestyle 
are in the movie. Appear in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and if you read, I'm not going to give anything away. If you read about the folks that appear in this movie, it's amazing how much went into creating this true fiction uh, around the book that it was based on uh, called Nomadland. Um, the movie is beautiful. It is yeah. fantastic. And I am going to Wall Drug Store at some point in my life. I've been. I, have you I, really? I, I, can oh. I flat out tell you that, like, I'm watching the movie and I'm like, oh my God, they're going to Wall Drug. And I was so excited. Yes. I was, <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I was working in Minneapolis on a project when I was a consultant. And <laughs> I took a vacation to go to the Badlands and to the Black Hills and to Mount Rushmore. I apologize to all of my. Uh, uh, Native American friends for that, um, but um, and and I stopped at Wall Drug on the way. And oh man! It's, it's it was just like yes, this is, and I had, I knew nothing about it, but then like as I was planning the trip, I'm like, oh, what's this Wall Drug thing? And I found out like it was a huge thing. It's and a I huge was, thing. Yeah. It's a huge thing, and I was and I I got ice cream there. So nice. <laughs> and, yeah, nice. and um, yeah, it's it's great. I have a Wall Drug magnet up on my. Phone, oh, nice. So. I, I tell you, the, the, the effect that this movie had on me uh, is such that I literally entered this past week since I watched the movie. I've been describing this to people. I finally entered the phase of cabin fever in this whole pandemic experience to where I'm like, OK, I, I literally did research on like road trips. Are they safe? And I was happy to find out. Yes, they are, because I need to get on the road at some point. That's what this movie lit a fire in me again to be on the road and see. And that's not even the point of the, of the movie of the story, but it's just, it's a, from a film standpoint, it is beautifully put together. Chloe Zhao picks up the golden globe for best direct, uh, yeah. best direction. Um, deservedly so. Yeah. And yeah, I can't recommend this movie enough. Uh, Paul, your rating on our five taco scale for no Oh, this is an easy five in guac. It, it, it's just, it, it, it's, it's, it's perfect. It's, it, it's a, just a great film. It did a great job of giving you drama without it going past the point and becoming over dramatic. It's right. just so. Uh, it it my my five in guac is because the story is grounded to use your your phrase absolutely, and it is understated but effective. I I, I need people to watch Nomadland. So. Yeah. And I just I, I I I hate to change the subject really quick, but just so the Golden Globe people know that Anna Taylor Joy and Emma was fantastic, and that was movie was funny, and Maria Barakalova was fantastic in the Borat subsequent movie film, and that movie was actually funny. So it's not like we needed to give it to Rosamund Pike because she mm -hmm. was a good actress in a movie that wasn't at all funny. But anyway, but No Man Land, fantastic. Yeah, yes. indeed, indeed. So uh, make sure you check those movies out. And again, let us know what you're thinking. It has been another fun week of talking movies with the both of you. And uh, we're just going to keep this train rolling. Choo -choo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We want to say thank you to all of you who stay with us week to week and uh, hang out with us for these episodes. Thank you so much for doing that. We look forward to doing more. Please, please, please continue to take care of yourselves out there. Stay safe. Uh, do all the stuff you need to do to be healthy and more importantly, love one another. You gotta spread love, man. Uh, Paul, Susan, I can't wait to do this again. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Why not? Indeed. From all of us to all of you, don't forget, you're awesome. You're amazing. And the world's a better place because you are in it. We will see you next time on Real to Real Talk. Yeah, yeah. Bye.